Good morning. Welcome to the CBS AM debrief uh, this last day of September uh, 2011, just uh, just past uh, 8.30 here. Uh, overnight market action in the US saw the, uh, the indices lower. Um, this was partly on the back of the uh, move down in uh, financial stocks, um, but this uh, ultimately was offset by a rise in, uh, in crude uh, up to levels not seen in the last seven weeks or so. Uh, so that helped the energy sector along. And uh, as a consequence, uh, the Dow ended up closing down uh, 22 points or 0.21 of a percent. And then moving into the other indices, the S&P 500 was down 0.26 and the NASDAQ 0.13. Uh, in Europe, we had the FTSE down 0.16, uh, the CAC 0.67, and the DAX uh, 0.46. So um, really not too, uh, too uh, nothing too uh, sort of thrilling there. Um, and then of course yesterday we had our market ending, ending up at a little bit lower, down 24. Just going to have a look now at uh, what the futures are suggesting for our open. And pointing down five at the moment. So um, really a bit of a lack of direction. Uh, the Hang Seng up uh, a bit more positive, uh, up 211 points. And the Nikkei 225 down 30. Moving on now to take a look at the calendar for today. And there's quite a, quite a lot of data out, um, mostly or a lot of them from, from Japan. So we've got uh, Manufacturing Purchase and Manager Index. Uh, so that's obviously an important one to see what manufacturing activity is doing. Uh, industrial production month on month for August, year on year. Uh, retail sales, retail trade and, and so on. So that will uh, paint a uh, help paint a bit of a picture as to uh, where things are headed in Japan. Uh, so those numbers, are, this is the uh, forecast column down the middle here, so uh, we're both forecasting clearly a better number in, uh, in retail trade, for example, um, and then the previous number was 0.7. Um, so looking like we'll see some um, some improved numbers there by and large. Uh, that data is out just before uh, market open here. Uh, then some Australian and Kiwi data, um, private sector credit, uh, economic activity, uh, business confidence uh, New Zealand around uh, midday. And then Japan, housing starts for August and housing starts year on year uh, for the uh, year to August. Uh, so the uh, forecast is for 10.2, the previous 4.3. So again, things looking uh, if those numbers proved to be correct, looking a bit better. Uh, over to the UK, housing uh, prices. Um, forecast is 0.3, previous 0.9, so uh, a little bit of a pick up there. And, uh, and similarly, uh, year on year, actually year on year, looks a little bit uh, inverted. Uh, then across to Germany for unemployment change. Uh, forecast is for uh, 20,000 fewer jobs, uh, previous was 17, and the unemployment rate to stay at 7.6. Uh, CPI year on year for September for Eurozone. Canadian gross domestic product month on month. Uh, 0.1 was the previous forecast, uh, forecast rather, the uh, previous was 0.2. That's a negative number. Person consumption, GDP, obviously a big one. The US uh, jobless claims, and uh, that's a weekly figure, and uh, personal consumption uh, pretty much rounds out the uh, the economic uh, data for this Thursday. Move on now. Something that I wanted to start uh, sharing with uh, with the people that uh, watch the AM debrief is the vector vest analysis on uh, what's happening with the market. And we can see here that the market timing indicator is still looking positive. We like anything above that red line there. And we've also got um, a price indicator, relative timing, 
and our buy sell ratio. So our price indicator is green, so that shows that uh, our prices are moving up overall, and uh, therefore we have a somewhat bullish bias to the market, and uh, the uh, suggestion there is to uh, pretty much continue to stick to uh, safe, undervalued stocks, which is what the Vector uh, system tries to, uh, to identify, and then um, if we're happy with the market timing, we can then move on and look at the individual stocks that are suggested in the system based on the parameters of value, safety, and timing. So just to have a quick look here, the stock selection based on that parameter, and you can see at the top of the list here is Kingsgate, followed by Mineral Resources, Flight Centre, Bougainville Copper, Medusa Mining, and, uh, and, and down the list it goes. So we'll continue to, uh, well, I'll, I intend to continue to uh, show this from time to time. I think it's, it's useful for people to get a feel for, uh, for that. So if anyone's got any feedback on that, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, moving on now, we will uh, take a look at the Falcon Trader. Uh, no, actually, we won't. We will move on to commodities. So, overlook here. So, um, West Texas crude up to seventy-seven ninety-two, so nearly seventy-eight dollars. Um, so, fairly, uh, fairly good move there. Although that number there doesn't suggest that. Um, <clears throat> don't know. Actually, that's the start of the, this latest trading session, electronic trading session, I imagine. So, um, moving on to the softs, uh, coca at uh, 28.65, up 0.48, uh, corn at 5.05, up 5, uh, cotton at 101.24. Now, um, we have uh, issued a cotton warrant, which is a short, and uh, that's really looking good. I think uh, Benson, our warrants guy, has really nailed it there um, at the top of the market, at least it appears that way, and I think, in fact, that might be the uh, limit of the daily downtick, about 4 cents. So um, there might be some uh, further pent-up uh, um, shorting pressure there. So um, looking really good, that one. So it's only 48 hours into the uh, into the warrant. Uh, if you want to find out more or see if you can still get set on that, please feel free to give us a call or send me an email. That's uh, dcdeltacharlie at commodityproking.com.au. Uh, moving on, though, to um, uh, oats, uh, 3.35.5. Two and a half, rough rice twelve forty two down point four one four, uh, soy at ten ninety nine that was down eleven, uh, sugar at twenty four ninety three down point three six, and then wheat at six eighty three and a half down one and a quarter, and then wool at nine twenty which was even, copper at three sixty five point two which was down point nine five, and gold continuing to march higher. Can't help but start to feel that uh, this um, bull run is turning into a bit of a bubble. But uh, uh, yeah, don't uh, don't buck the trend, I guess. Uh, so thirteen eleven thirty up one dollar, and then silver at twenty one ninety three down point zero two two. Over now to currencies. Uh, the euro is buying one point three six two six US dollars. Uh, the pound one point five seven nine eight. And uh, the US dollar is buying 83.7580 yen. And the US dollar was buying, so the Aussie was buying 96.90 US dollars. And the US dollar is buying 1.0322 Canadian and 0 0.9770 Swiss francs. Uh, we'll just go and have a look here at. Our crosses, if we can. Okay, I'm not seemingly able to see that, but uh, uh, our, our crosses would show, if we could see it, that uh, the Canadian and Australian dollar are at exact parity. Uh, for what it's worth, it is just a name. 
Okay, so um, for the second time now, we'll move over to the Falcon and just have a quick look through here because there really isn't too much to uh, to, to sort of uh, dramatic happening. Uh, once again, on our local uh, market, the spy here, it is starting to uh, become a little bit of concern that we do not seem to be able to take out this 4700 level and that seems to be sort of rounding out a bit there. So starting to, uh, to think particularly going into October, which can be a pretty volatile month, that, uh, that we may see some retracement here off this, uh, this rally up that we've had. Uh, just take a quick look now at Origin Energy. This is a buy recommendation by uh, GT Financial. I like their work and uh, we'll see how this one goes. So we've got a channel pattern here at least that's uh, that's what I can see and uh, we're at the bottom of that channel here and uh, could be a good time to get set looking for um, top side target I believe it was uh, $19.20 um, so that's quite a big run um, certainly probably be happy with uh, with something less less than that at this stage or even $18 I would have thought Okay, I know we've just mentioned uh, cotton, but let's just take a quick look at it nonetheless. And there we are, that really has gone to the moon. And we had a sort of a double top action there and a, a gap here that perhaps needs to be filled. This is where it actually had a 15 year high. Uh, the Indians have said they're happy to export cotton and are expecting a good crop out of the US. So uh, watch that one. The uh, code there is CTH1 if you want to have a look at that on the, uh, the futures contract on the Falcon Trader. Looking now at uh, crude. and continuing to trade in that range, so I really haven't got too much uh, constructive that I can suggest there, so um, we'll move on and see what else we can find here that uh, might be of interest, and uh, let's see exactly what the Aussie dollar is looking like. Okay, well, <clears throat> certainly staying in that trend, and uh, yeah, I don't like to say it, uh, the, the word parity, but uh, it's looking very close. So um, I think uh, that probably wraps things up and uh, waffled on enough, enough uh, here this morning. So uh, we'll uh, I'll, I'll attempt to keep it uh, reasonably short. And uh, as always, thanks very much for your attention. Bye for now.